um, uh, like I say, pressure right. that comes on you to do that. You just relax in, in, in hearing the voice of God. Hmm. Um, you know, God, you know, he's, he's, they're, they're both the anointings of, of, a, of a full pulpit ministry or a five-fold ministry, hmm. and there's anointing of the marketplace. Hmm. Just like yourself, you're in communications. Right. Um, that's an anointing. Hmm. That's a marketplace anointing, and that anointing is just as real and, and just as um, beneficial as you would if you were preaching. A lot right. of people think for them to really be able to please God... And if they love God, they're going to preach. Right. And there's a whole lot of people that have done that, <laughs> mm. and they've ended up shipwrecked. In other mm. words, they've wasted a whole lot of time. Because there's an anointing for a school teacher. There's right. an anointing for a stay-at-home mom. There's an anointing for an artist. There's an anointing for Hollywood. There's right. an anointing. And, and those anointings carry you into those environments, and if you're faithful to the voice of God, those anointings will raise you up mm. to be a ruler in that environment. That is amazing. So now, how would you explain, first of all, what is the definition of God to you? Who, what is God to you? What is that definition for you? Well, it, it's not a def- definition. Okay. Um, this is, it, God himself is person. Hmm. And uh, he, uh, you can't, it, this, it, you know, define him uh, as just, you know, one who is sovereign or one who has all power, or so forth like that. Mm-hmm. The only thing you do, basically, is characterize him mm-hmm. and talk about what he is and how many ways that God can can manifest himself right. and so forth. Um, but I think if you deal with God as a person, he's a father, mm-hmm. <clears throat> he is, he is a, a God of love, um, he is one who uh, is all-knowing, all-powerful, and all... Uh, <clears throat> he is one who uh, cares about uh, people's lives, right, right. Um, so forth and so on. And just uh, try to them that way. You know, what is God? Mm. Or who is God? Uh, it's, it, you know, you just got to get to know that right. for yourself. <laughs> you know? Okay. Not a, okay, that. Okay, I can definitely dig that. Now, family. Mm-hmm. Now, I've always wondered this. You look at the Obamas, you look at the Creflos, of course, Kenneth mm-hmm. Copeland's, yourself. Mm-hmm the partnership of a wife or that partner, that companion. Mm. What type of person does it take to stick by someone with a vision as yourself? Well, it takes the one that God shows. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and the problem comes in when we kind of get um, and try to do it without God. Mm. And it's not like Noah trying to build the ark without getting the dimensions of the lumber. Right. Um, you, it might look good on the start, mm-hmm. but after the 39th day of the flood, the <laughs> boat goes down. Right. And the idea about it is that you pick the one that God chose for you because he knows what, he, in fact, you're going to go through. Mm. And he picks a person suitable for that journey. Mm. And so you have to wait on God, let God confirm it, and so forth, and he will. Hmm. And uh, he'll give you that kind of person. And then um, as you're growing together, he'll give you the grace hmm. uh, to be able to, um, um, I don't say put up with, but be, <laughs> able to, uh, be able to stick, stick by one another hmm. as a growing process takes place. Because everything has growth. Right. And, uh, you know, as, as you grow, uh, knowing that things won't work out, uh, exactly the way I want it between this person and that person all the time. And as you grow, you get to know each other and so forth and so on. And, and I tell you, pretty soon you'll hit that smooth road. Mm. And after you do that, you just know each other so well mm. until it's uh, it's almost supernatural. That is awesome. So now what is the soul and how does it work in our lives? Well, the soul is is mind, will, emotions, intellect, and imagination. It's mm. where it's where Adam fell to um, once he sinned in the garden. Mm. He fell to the limitations of his soul. And so that is basically um, information that's gathered through my five senses, mm. uh, bringing that information in and, 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 and synthesizing that information to make a, a certain decision. Hmm. The problem with that is most of reality is not in the soul realm. Hmm. Most of reality 
is in the spirit realm. Oh, wow. And, and so the spirit that you have inside of you, uh, if you're born again, is alive to that spiritual reality. Hmm. And so that has to be factored in your decisions. When, when you have, um, I'm coming out with a book here, and, and in this book, it talks about the relationship, the pulpit and the pew, mm. and that people who are being raised up especially as market leaders and influencers in the marketplace, every one of them needs a priest hmm. because there's a certain grace that a priest has on them that a king or marketplace leader does not have. Right. And that's why you see billionaires have a, have a spiritual you know, advisor or right. something. Because it's just like uh, going to Africa. I was in Africa going in one time to see a, a king in one of the lands that was still uh, kind of under sovereign rule. Right. And I was going to see the king, and as I was going in, there was a witch doctor right at the door oh, wow. shaking, shaking beads at me. Now, that witch doctor was the spiritual component of that king. Oh, wow. In other words, the king knew that there was a grace that the king, here, whoever it was, didn't have. I mean, that's just like um, mm, the king of England... And the, and the Pope. Mm. Um, it, 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 it's, it's these two uh, sides of the anointing that have to be there for completeness. Mm. And the Church has not been trained in that because the Church has had more uh, focus on denominations mm. rather than kingdom. Wow. And in kingdom, this is a normal way to be. So every king needs a priest. Mm. And then as you move on, the job of the priest is to go and get provision so that the provision can be provided for the priest so that the priest won't have to spend their time working to try to get provision, but spend their time getting in the Word so that they can provide spiritual provision for the congregation. Wow. And whenever a person or king many times um, gets to be big in terms of a billionaire, that's why they don't think they need church. Oh wow! Because they've never tied the the two together. In other words, when Abraham <clears throat> was with God, there was no division between his work mm. and his worship. Mm. Uh, I've gone over to a country, and I want to go to see the guy that stand behind the counter in the hotel, but he wasn't there. Where was he? I looked back there, and he was kneeling on a rug mm. because it was his prayer time. Hmm. Now, notice what he did in the East. They don't separate their God from their business. Right. But in the West, we do. It's called dualism. It mm. came from the Greeks. And that's why people uh, could go to church on Sunday, and, 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 and then, you know, their wives, their husband and wives, be fighting on Monday. Wow. Because it, it, we, go, we just serve God on Sunday. We don't serve God on Monday. Hmm. It, it's, he's a Sunday God. Well, right. that came... From this dualism, um, Socrates philosophy, hmm. and uh, it's not uh, kingdom. So right. now, all of a sudden, there's a thrust thrust on the preaching of the kingdom. Hmm. And now the kingdom is being preached. All of a sudden, the church is starting to come together, and you see names on the churches now. You don't see First Baptist or Second Methodist. You see now, running with Jesus Christian, <laughs> or you see, why? Because they're leaving that denominational split that kept us divided. Right. And, and now they're joining in unity as one body. Mm. Wow. Okay. So now, my question is this. You have so many people that look at the Bible, and the first thing they say when it's time to read the Bible is, I don't understand this. So what would you say to someone that is newly to it, or their, their minds are getting a little bit open to it, how to understand and interpret the Bible, the stories? What is the mind or the, the place of thinking that you have to be to really make it a living thing in your life? Well, I think when people are first born again, um, they have to be taught uh, and shown and instructed uh, how to receive from another source. Right. And um, so you take them through a foundation class uh, hmm. or take them through some foundational uh, teachings that would start 
laying the foundation for them to be able to read a passage of Scripture mm. and the Holy Spirit talk to them at the same time. Hmm. In other words, they'll come out with an understanding they didn't have before. They said, my goodness, all this was in the Word of God all the time? Yeah, right. well, why didn't I see this? Well, you didn't see it because you weren't hooked up with that source. Mm. And now that source begins to speak to you. That's why, um, you know, when people, when I was unsaved, I didn't know any better. Right. Uh, I did a whole lot of things that were crazy. <laughs> and the reason why I did them is because of the source I was to connect it to. Mm-hmm. Now, the, Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they what? Know not what they, they do. They know not what they do. Right. And that's right, because they think they're doing right. Right. Paul, when he was arresting Christians before God got a hold of them under the Master's Road, he thought he was doing right. He was a brilliant man. He right. spoke, what, several languages and was trained under the one of the finest hmm. of the Pharisees that there was. But yet, he was blind. Right. And I'm saying, because you've got a an education from an Ivy League university and have your PhD, right. that's all dark knowledge. Mm. That's, that's not the knowledge uh, of the light that you're going to need to walk in to be able to be successful right. in this earth uh, from an eternal perspective. Wow. Um, you can straighten up chairs under Titanic and everything's in order, <laughs> but the Titanic's going down. So right. Without the kingdom being preached, uh, man has no hope. Mm. Mm. Now, is there more than one way to God, or is there, no, is there only no, one way? there's only one way, and people have tried to apply that dualism and all the philosophy to God right. and make it seem like there's more than one way to God. There is not more than one way to God. Let me give you an example. Okay. A guy was telling me his experience down in Brazil, and that some Indians came to him, some of those uh, Indians that back there in that whole oh, Amazon portion, Right. I mean, they still got some 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 strongholds back there mm. that are really untouched almost by right. humans. And uh, and so he said that this Indian uh, uh, who was a leader in his particular tribe down there in the Amazon, he came to him, and 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 what had happened is they had prayed for him to be saved, and he said a man came to him, hmm. and this man said that he was to come to this tent, and that these people, who told me about it, would tell him about this man who would save them. Wow. Now, he didn't know anything <laughs> about Jesus. Okay. But I'm just saying that notice, even in the back roads of the Amazon, mm. for you to get saved, you're still going to have to know Jesus. Right. There is no other way. Mm. Is God in control of everything? Because that is a thing that people always say. He's in control of everything. He's in everything. And what will happen will happen. How do you view that point? No, God is not. God is in <laughs> control of the church. Right. The church should be in control of the earth. Mm. And and it, if the church does not take its place, then the arms and legs and the voice and the message of God does not go forth. Mm. Because he turned the church, the earth, over to man. Mm. And he won't take it back until this thing is all over. And so a lot of people say, well, why is he letting this thing? He's not. The church is letting it happen. Mm. And so if the church shifts into gear and take their ownership and responsibility of this earth and do and use the power that God has given the church to use, they can still a storm just as fast as Jesus did. Wow! They they can they can they can they can do a creative miracle and give a person whose hand's been cut off give him another hand in a in a moment. Mm. But we've never learned that. Never been taught. Hmm. We've been fighting out denominations and trying to say, you know, you're stealing my members hmm. and all of that stuff. That's only a distraction in the church growing up and developing so that it can truly govern this planet. Wow. Now, when you, I've heard constantly, they say, you know, in the Bible, it states that we're going to be able to do greater works than what Jesus did. Explain what that means. Is that a, is that a metaphor or is that really great? Because he did some amazing things. So what does that mean for a person to know that you will do greater works? Well, I, I think um, it, it is a greater work uh, idea, meaning that when Jesus was in the earth, um, he could only minister to those that were with him. Mm. In other words, the followers and the people and so forth. 
He could only touch those who he touched. Hmm. But the greater work is for him to be in everybody hmm. that has come to him, and they touch everybody at the same time. Hmm. In other words, they can touch an entire um, race of humanity and minister to them. I can minister at the same time you're ministering there. I can minister in China right. and the greater works. But also it has to do with uh, us moving into a dimension of power. Mm. I think it's going to be expressed in this earth uh, before Jesus comes back that is going to be so dynamic hmm. and so awesome that everybody's going to have a chance to say that Jesus is Lord. Wow. And that if, in fact, that does not happen, then there could be no more um, display. Hmm. But I, I really believe there is a power that's coming that he's going to release. And it's not our power. Mm -hmm. It's him. He's the head of the church. Hmm. And he's going to release it through the body of Christ. So now, I've heard worship him in spirit and in truth. Mm -hmm. What does that mean to worship him in spirit and in truth? How does that apply? Well, um, let's deal with truth first. Okay. Um, uh, the truth and justice of God is on the right side, hmm. and grace and mercy is, are on the left side. Mm. And that God uh, has a mercy and grace that he gives to every person. But for us to really understand God and, and, and get um, the um, kind of development that God and power that God wants in the church, you're going to have to come in on the right side. That's why uh, Hebrew is written from right to left and not mm. left to right. And a lot wow. of times people think, well, he's just, you know, grace, he's just grace, and so forth. He is a God of grace. But if grace is the only thing that people come in through, they miss the judgment factor of God. Mm. That they miss the reverence of God. They miss the honoring of God. Mm. Uh, it's like a kid that you just only gave candy to. Right. But you never gave him the, the law. You never gave him the disciplines and so forth and so on. So we all need the truth to be able to stay on course. Right. Uh, to fear God and so forth. And spirit, uh, meaning that you don't have to go to a certain place to worship him. Mm. Uh, uh, you know, you now the Bible talks to us to go and assemble together with the believers. Right. It tells us that. That's a command. And so we do that. But you can worship him in the restroom. Mm. You can worship him in a phone booth. Right. You can worship him in a restaurant. Mm -hmm. So he's he doesn't have to go anywhere to be everywhere. Right. And so that is the worshiping of God in spirit now. Mm. And a lot of times what we think, if we can just make enough noise, uh, we can worship him. Right. But the times that I've seen the power of God flow the strongest is when things seem to happen the quietest. Mm. And it seems like the power, think about it, if you got a light on in your office now, if you see sparks coming out and you see all that noise it's making, then you'll see that something's being shorted out. Sometimes we are shorting out the power of God hmm. rather than worshiping God right. and allowing the power to flow. So we must realize that the worship in us comes from our spirit. No wow. flesh will glory in his pre presence. Wow. He doesn't want the flesh. That's why he has the three parts of the tabernacle. He hmm. has the outer court, the inner court, and the holy of holies. Hmm. And in the holy of holies is where you go and then once you go in there, everything is bare before God. And hmm. that is a place where you lose all sense of me, myself, how I'm looking, so forth. All these eyes go away. Wow. And now it's only about him in spirit and in truth. Awesome. Now, I remember hearing a story also of what you dealt with when God put it on you to take over the 32-acre uh, piece of land, which was the mall. Now... My question is, how does someone possess the land? 
because that is such a unique question. You think are I run out the inhabitants, possess the land. You you don't get you know you think different things. People running out. What does that really mean? Well, um, it it means for us to possess what Jesus died to provide. Mm. Whether it's health, whether it's wealth, whether it's joy, whatever it is. And each time you're going to have to do it by faith mm. because you have a resistor called the devil. Right. And his job is to keep you from your inheritance. Mm. And so the first thing you're going to have to do, three steps. Mm. One, you're going to have to believe. And when we say believe... You can find that in Matthew chapter 9, verse 27 through 30. When you say believe, you're not talking about you have to see evidence to believe it. The thing that you have to do believe, believing starts with a choice. Mm. I choose to believe what God just said about me. Wow. And once you do that, then the next step is that you act on the Word of God. Once you believe, and Abraham believed God, right. and once he believed that he could have a child at a hundred years old, and he was past childbirth, and that Sarah could have one, and she's never had children, mm-hmm. once he believed that, and it was fully persuaded, he then acted on what he believed. That's acting on the Word of God. Mm-hmm. He has to release his faith. And faith is acting on the Word of God. You go down for a job interview, and they say, hey, We're going to hire you on Monday. We'll start you Monday. Next thing you know, you leave there. You go call somebody and tell them, hey, I just got a job. So next thing you know, the next day you go out and try to get some clothes or something like that to wear at the job. What? Because you just acted Mm. on what you believe. It's no difference in the kingdom. Wow. And a lot of people believe, but they never get up and act. Mm. And you can't do that. Once you do that, you violate the law that would bring in your possession. And then the next thing you do, of course, the last, is expect a miracle. Mm. And that is key, because nothing happens without expectation. Wow. You've got to expect, and so those are three steps. Okay, so information, revelation, what's the difference? Well, information comes mainly through the senses. And you've got senses, and the senses tell you what is, and, uh, and you believe the senses. And uh, next thing you know, that's your information. Right. Revelation is something that doesn't come to the senses. It mm. comes from God, and it comes directly into your spirit, and then it God illumines it to your mind by the Holy Spirit. Right. And so it doesn't come through your soul. Uh, it it uh, and, and from the uh, normal faculties of your senses, mm. but it comes through uh, this this whole spirit realm. So once you get revelation, revelation always brings you into what I call a revolution. Right. In other words, you <laughs> see it. You see it so clearly mm. until you start acting on it, and it's usually something that other people cannot see. Why you're acting on this? Right. Why are you doing that? It's because you can see something they can't see. Mm. So my question, I know I keep saying my question. You have a, We have an epidemic right now in America of fatherless children. They said that it's a, reported that there's over 25 million uh, kids right now in the United States are, that are fatherless. What is your opinion on that, and what does it take to become a man utilizing the Word of God? What is manhood in, in the kingdom? Well, you know, um, the enemy has has done that. When I say that, that's the devil. Right. And what he does is the enemy wants to keep um, families from forming. Mm. Um, because the family represents a basic unit <clears throat> that is the model from God. And also it is the basic unit uh, for the community uh, which the community spreads into uh, the city, and the city spreads into the state, and the state spreads into a nation. Right. So a nation because it gets its stability from its family. Mm. And so if the enemy can destroy the model of the family, he can take down and try to take down the walls of a nation. Mm. So here you've got families forming, and the first thing the enemy tries to do is redefine them. Wow. 
and make you think that a family is this when a family is not that at all. Mm-hmm. That is not a family. That, that cannot uh, hold up when it comes to some of the assaults that are trying to come on our children and so forth and so on. Right. So that is that the whole idea is to, the Bible says <clears throat> that um, if, the, um, if the righteous, let me see what it says here, if the righteous uh, be, I want to say it, um, be destroyed, um, what, yeah, if the foundations be destroyed, that's out of Psalm chapter 11 and verse 3, if the foundations <laughs> be destroyed, what can the righteous do? Right. The, 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 the foundation of the family is the man. Mm-hmm. The, the, the foundation of the community is the family. Right. And then you move on up from there. Now, so if an enemy wants to destroy a foundation of a nation, he comes after the family. Mm. And what does he come after specifically? The man. Right. Put him in jail, get him on heroin, uh, get him to leave the family, get him to do something, mm. and then take over the family with something as a substitute mm. and call that substitute the head of the family, when that's not the head of the family at all. Mm. Wow. Okay. I can definitely dig that. Prayer. All right. So that, I'm, I'm saying that because um, for you to do anything in this right. earth, that God has ordained, you're going to have to have some faith. That's right. And uh, most men sometimes are trying to stay there without any faith because right. they're going to church, and when they do go to church, they're not, you know, cooking up anything but dog food. <laughs> and so I'm saying in that, what you have to do is you have to understand that this whole thing of men mm. and taking men and raising them up again, yeah, is what I believe God's going to do. So now, the Lord put in your heart also the Joseph's Business School of Ministry. Tell us a little bit about uh, what that and how that process be- came to you, because that's not the easiest thing uh, to really create a curriculum, put something in, and actually empower people to get to their best. How was that process for you? Uh, uh, as I go through this, I'm going to have to uh, break camp here. Because okay, no problem. We'll be wrapping up, definitely. Yeah. Uh-huh. Um, this comes out of Isaiah chapter 48 and verse 17. He says this, Thus said the Lord thy Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, I am the Lord thy God, which teacheth thee the prophet, and lead thee by the way that thou should go. Mm. Now, this is God saying that he's a God of prophet. P-R-O-F-I-T. Mm. A lot of times we call it non-profit. Mm. No such thing in the Bible. There is not anything like that in the Bible. So prophet is something that God thought of, and it comes back from Genesis, which says, be fruitful, multiply, replenish the earth, and subdue it. It's for increase, and that as God gives a person an idea and starts a business, usually that person who starts that business is called an entrepreneur. Right. The word entrepreneur is a French word. Mm. It means... One who creates something new. Mm. So an entrepreneur creates something new. Without the entrepreneur, you'll find that a lot of times countries get stagnant. They enter um, into a place where um, they can't meet budgets, just like California, Mm. for example. Why? Because they're all trying to feed off the same piece of pie. Mm. But if you had someone that could create a bigger pie, wow. then now you don't have to be limited by the size of the pool of money that you had to draw from. Right. All of a sudden, somebody can create more money. So one of the main jobs of the entrepreneur is to create wealth. Mm-hmm. And so we started the Joseph Business School because you do have entrepreneurs but they haven't known that they were called, mm. and they haven't known that part of the reason why they were called was to finance the kingdom. Wow. To make it so that the vision that they give, he gives to the prophet or the priest can go forth. Not only that vision, but the vision that he gives them. Because mm. you can't run a business and keep it um, as a going concern if you don't make a profit. Wow, that's correct. You, yeah, so a profit is necessary for the sustaining of a business. Now, the entrepreneur 
is a person that's a separate calling. I'm, I'm not talking about just just working in a company. I'm saying an entrepreneurial minded. Because mm. when I was working for IBM, they gave something called a suggestion award. What is that? That's an award for anybody who would come up with a suggestion and show IBM how they can save money internally. Wow. And I saw a lady get a check for $100,000. Whoa. And that $100,000 check was for a suggestion that could save IBM a significant amount of money. Now, notice what they were doing. They were creating in the company entrepreneurial-minded people, mm. people that would create. Because you made, you're made in the image of God, mm-hmm. and he is a creator, Elohim. Mm. And that creative DNA is in you. Right. The, 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 the devil doesn't want you to use it, mm-hmm. because it can bring you profit. Right. It can cause you to have the revenue. So he wants to hold the money and keep you from getting it. Mm-hmm. And so the entrepreneurs are going to be put out in communities that will get a significant amount of wealth, that they can eradicate poverty, especially in the minority communities. Wow. Wow. So I just have two more, and then I'm going to let you go, because I know you have another yeah, meeting that yeah, you have I to get to. Yeah. Definitely. Mm-hmm. And this is going to be the law of legacy, and that's one of the things we do in the uh, 21 Irrefutable Laws of Leadership. Bill Winston, what do you want, or when somebody, when you're gone away from here, and when somebody brings your name up, Bill Winston, what do you want your legacy to, to be? Well, to advance the kingdom. I just want to advance the kingdom. I want to do what part I have to advance the kingdom. How many buildings I'm going to leave? How many? I'll, I'm not. I'm not going to even guess that right. because I'll probably come in low. Right. And, uh, I'm, I'm just going to say that I'm going to advance the kingdom. I'm going to save a whole lot of souls. I'm going to create a whole lot of millionaires and billionaires, right. and so forth and so on. And that's my job. My job is to create those people who make a significant footprint mm. in this earth. Uh, for the kingdom of God. And prosperity, and to let you go, prosperity, tides, offering, what connection does that have with growth in the kingdom financially to get to the millionaire, billionaire status? Do you have to sow? Do you have to pay tides? Do you have to uh, yeah. put in? What is your opinion on that? Well, if, if you don't pay tithes, you won't, <clears throat> not as, as far as the kingdom is concerned, mm-hmm. you won't receive the anointing and the fullness of the anointing to continue to prosper mm. and be a person that would increase financially. Um, because when a tithe is not paid, then the, di- the door is open up for the enemy to get in and to actually rob a person wow. of whatever they have coming in. Mm. Uh, for example, when they... Uh, took the city of Jericho. Mm. The Jericho, God instructed them, instructed Joshua to instruct the people in Joshua chapter 6, tell them that everything of spoil that they get, bring it into the house of the temple of the Lord. That is the first fruit. You're going to bring that into the house. Well, what did they do? A man named Achan, he decides he's got to pay some bills with his. <laughs> So I'm, I'm putting it in my own Right, word. right, right. First Wednesday. So what does he do? He takes it. Now, it may be that baby sister needs some shoes and so forth, and it may sound legitimate. Right. But there is nothing legitimate about putting God second. Mm. You will never, ever see God respond and bring prosperity to a person that doesn't put him first. Wow. Definitely. It's a, it's a law. And so when a person does not tithe, no matter what kind of situation they're in, if they do not tithe and trust God that he was going to work a miracle for the situation that they're in, that person has just put themselves in the hands of the curse. Wow. And uh, it, even though that God has called them blessed, uh, they have now into a place where the wall is down, the enemy can rob them, and they can be an embarrassment. Wow. So this has been an amazing action-packed uh, event. I just thank you so much uh, for giving me this time and to be able to ask you these candid questions. I thank you so much for being able to answer them. What is one thing that you would leave with the people, um, the listeners, for the ones that will tune in later now? What is one thing that you want them to understand and know uh, that you know for sure that you want to impart with them before you go? God does nothing apart from faith. Mm. Not a thing. Not a thing. Get your faith together. This is not... It, faith is your master key. Faith can get you healed. 
faith can get you a job. Mm. Faith can expand your business. Mm. Faith, just get your faith together. It's your master key. Mm. It'll touch every area of your life. You'll even understand Scripture better if you read it through faith. Wow. And so I'm saying, if I were to leave anything, once you get born again, once you get filled with the Spirit, go study faith. Get the book <laughs> on faith and learn what it is. Faith. Uh, Brookshire, thank you. Definitely faith. So definitely, how can we find you, more of your audio books and teachings? Where can we um, find you at? BillWinston.org. BillWinston.org. Thank you, That's Dr. Right. Bill Winston, for That's so right. much for coming in. We definitely look forward to you and so many more in the future. You have yourself a definitely a blessed day, and God bless you for coming on. Take care. And you just heard it right here, everybody. You just heard it right here. Oh, my God. We just had Dr. Bill Winston on the phone lines, everybody. An amazing action-packed show. This is going to be information that I'm sure, I am sure that will change your life. You've seen it here. I mean, that's the whole purpose of what we do here is to make sure that you are fed with the information that's going to move you to the next level we always say where your mind goes where your mind goes where your mind goes your body will follow there's always another you on the other side of everything that you go through there's always another you on the other side of what you go through and the one thing that i will say you were put here to create you were put here to create so go and create good intentionally because everything comes from the intention go and create good with intention because you have the ability to do whatever you give your focus to whatever you give your mind to you, it is it is there's no longer you have potential because as long as you can see it it is a living thing because everything starts with thought first i love each and every single one of you so much and you stay tuned right here to the bk experience again my main man mr kai redford wasn't in the house today we wish him much luck positive energy shooting out to him and to so many people at the bill winston ministries and also living word center church christian center church we love you so much we look forward to doing so many bigger things in the future again i'm your main man mr brookshire <laughs> yours truly i love all of you and again this is the bk experience i love all of y'all have an amazing day
Just so-